All right, let's get down to the chemistry here. I've been claiming that the lungs exhale and, and inhale everything, and they do it instantaneously. Really. Uh, they they are, are extremely quick to respond to a lack of oxygen and, and a, a, a excess of carbon dioxide, you know, which are both related. But they, they also deal with all the other chemicals that are in the air. They come into you and they are either used and brought into your body or in a lot of cases they're expelled from your body because they're things in your body that have been what they they're metabolized they're um methylated or i, I think they call it methylated uh, and they're they're consumed and they're put into carbonic acids and from your lungs those carbonic carbonic acids go into the air now now they're saying some scientists now are suggesting exhaled air contains as many 3500 compounds and the quality of the air affects you and so forth. And now they're saying that it can usually, it can be used, exhaled, human exhales can be a useful diagnostic tool in catching respiratory ailments. I agree 100%. Now, what are they going to look for in that ailment? They say, well, if you don't have this in your lungs or you have too much of that, you're just sick. Well, I'm going to tell you that there's going to be a chemical in there and it's going to be probably a metal. Um, that's what I'm thinking, and it's going to be an enzyme cannot create the metal or cannot break down molecules small enough to be used by the metals. It's a dance in there. And let's start with the end of the dance. The end of the dance is you get exactly what you need in your body, and it works for you, and you're not sick. Well, how do you do that? They have to, you have to consume these little tiny molecules, and they have to be little bitty, 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 bitty tiny molecules. And they have to go into your body and be absorbed in your body in the right manner, in the right quantities. And they have to, if they build up, they have to be removed. Simple as that. Now, how do you do that? Well, obviously, your blood does it. Your blood brings things around and picks things up. Obviously, that's what happens. Your blood circulates around, around, around. And where does it go? It goes through your lungs. And, of course, it goes through your other organs and things like that. But <laughs> let's deal with the lungs. As your blood passes through your lungs, we know carbon dioxide is pumped out all the time. You start running, your lungs start going <laughs> because you need more oxygen. You need to remove carbon dioxide as well. Well, the rest of you does the same thing. You're doing work all day. You're doing this. You're doing whatever it is. Your body uses every kind of nutrition that it was made by God in the ground that was supposed to come into your body in this raw form and then be broken down in a natural way. So it shouldn't have preservatives, it shouldn't have this, it shouldn't have that, it shouldn't have all these crazy chemicals they put in there. But that's going to happen. I can't stop that. But let's deal with, let's deal with a perfect world. I used to, when I was in business, I'd say, what is your, give me your description of perfectness for you, and let's see if we can make it happen. And, of course, you never could. <laughs> but you can get close sometimes. So, what is perfectness? Perfectness is I don't get sick. I just eat what I want and I have a good time and I feel good and I don't get sick. I have plenty of health. My skin is good. My eyes work. My hair is all right. My teeth don't go bad. I can do work all day long. I can do all that stuff. I'm perfect. That's my perfect world. So how do I do that? Well, Obviously, you have to have the right chemistry going to the right places at the right times to make that strength, to make that chemistry in your body to, to, to end up with that result. So how do you get that chemistry to work? Well, it's the moving them through your blood, all of these different molecules through your blood. So when they move through your blood, what moves them? And it is carboxylation. It's carbon attached to metals, attached to molecules. And they have little places in these metals that are transition zones that say, I can hold on to you just barely. And when we get to a place where the pH changes, even just the tiniest amount, and I think even pressures now, I'm pretty sure it's pressurization in the lungs that, that causes some of these carbonic acids to be released. But I also know it's it's chemistry and it's crystals, and that I can prove, and I will show you that. Okay, these are transition metal colors. 
that's really all you have to remember about this the titanium vanadium all these different well these are only a few this is just a handful this is even not even a handful there's almost a hundred of these almost a hundred I mean gold is in there what we're talking about cadmium um, um, iridium uranium those are all in your body those are all in your body or they should be if they're not you are not going to be able to transport things in your body that's how these things do they the metal ions hold on to things you see down here it says transition metals unlike other metals have partially filled d orbitals which can hold up to 10 electrons when ligands are present that's little molecules that they want to attach to some d orbitals become higher in energy than before and some become lower electrons can then move between these higher and lower orbitals by absorbing a simple photon of light the absorption of light affects the perceived color so you're going to see these colors when you look at something because of the light that's shining off of it the real reason i'm showing you this is because these have certain chemical propensities which means they 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 they, they want to attach to certain molecules and only those molecules well not only those molecules but they have a preference to those molecules and will attach and 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 want to attach let's put it that way so these are the colors remember these colors because now we're going to go into lungs which i can prove have these same colors now why do they have the same colors i think i know after long searching i think i finally understand this all right let's start with this these are mud fossils now anybody that's been following this understands that's a bonehead but this is a mud fossil it was not preserved as a dry scrappy little bits and pieces of bones this has every thing that you can imagine, all very well sewn. This is the ligament attachment where those little tiny holes there, those are little emphasis points. This still has the cartilage attached and all of the different characteristics of, of, of a fully articulated bone. It has tunica wrapping around it with this triangular um, wrapping. The last bitty piece of the bone, and I can never find this. Oh, there it is, right there. You see that? That's all that's left of that bone. Everything else in here has transitioned into what they call source rock in the petroleum industry. And it has something to do with hydro, um, the, um, you know, the stuff in the side of bones. Oh, I can't think of it. The marrow, the marrow inside the bones. There's something in there that that turns it into a uh, source rock, methanes and, and, and so forth. But anyway, this is what happens in mud. Okay, so that's the reason these things are preserved so well. Now, sometimes all you end up is with the scaffolding of a lung. All of the organic stuff is gone. You can see some red blood is still in there. You see all that red stuff in there? That's the blood. And, and some of the black stuff is from the... Um, the deoxygenated blood. The red is the, the oxygenated blood. So that happens. Now, here's the key. Let's look at an, a, a lung from some kind of creature. I don't know what it is, but I can tell you what. This is a lung. There's absolutely zero questions. And this is right here is where the airway enters. Now, I put a little water on there. And now let me put a little light on it. And hopefully you'll be able to see the crystals. You see those different crystals and those colors? Alright. Colors, which we just saw, are part of the transition metal complex colors. Alright. Now, this one doesn't have a whole lot of color variation in it, but I did cut one that has a little better. It still isn't perfect, but I will show you how opals display color magnificently. Now, this is also a lung. Now, you see the different colors in there? There's some blue and purples and red and pink and all that. Now, and then you see, if I can get this on a correct plane, you should be able to see that there's... Yeah, you see all those little pockets in there and all those little holes? That's blood. That's where the blood flowed between these different, what are now crystals. Now, before, I don't know what was in there before, but I can tell you what. That is different chemistry than that. 
which is different from this, which is different from that, and this, and this, and this, and this. And it's all different chemistry in the lung. So what does that tell me? Or what does it tell you? It should, it should tell you that these little spots are dealing with different molecules, different minerals. I, I mean, different, uh, different metals in the blood. So as this blood filters through here, these crystals, which are crystals now, the chemistry of that, that spot because I don't think it was a crystal then. The chemistry of that tissue would absorb, let's say, I don't know, some kind of carbonic acid gas. And this one, would, uh, is another one, it's 3,500, so they're all gonna be absorbing all kind of different chemistry. And that brings it, puts it in the blood going in or puts it in the oxygen, go or you know, the air going out, expels it out. And that is how these things, it has to have something to do with these colors. There is no other possibility. The colors have to be controlling what is being allowed in and out. Now this is a, a certified, DNA certified human lung. And that is the size of a human lung. That's the pattern of the pleura on the lung. That, you see how, you see that stuff? When you find, that's, that's all the bloody tissue that's the pleura. And this thing down here at the end is the, um, you know, it's like I got a, a fascia tongue, this big red splash at the end. They all have that. Oh, here's another one that was bloody when it came out of the ground, literally bled. You can see the little lobes of the lungs and everything in there. You can see all those little red spots. Every one of those had a blob of blood on it. And they bleed. I have one here I just picked up the other day out there. This one here is bleeding. You see there's a couple of scabs coming out. When you're, they're soaked and they come out of the ground, a lot of times when they dry up, they will blow blood blisters out of there. And underneath there, there is a mat of fibrin. And underneath that will be the holes of the veins or arteries. Veins normally. I mean the arteries normally. All right, so anyway, that's that. All right, once again, the transition metals. Now let's see where they're found in opals, because these are blood. This should be in your blood, and I'm going to show you why I can say that and prove it. Okay, that's a cross-section of a heart. They did some surgery and an implant there, it looks like. This is the aorta and the plumbing, and these are the different um, valves of the heart and, and the ventricles and the ventricle walls and all that, the chambers of the heart sort of stuff. Okay, this is an example of an opal heart. Now, I talked about the transition metals. You saw the colors. You saw how the lungs have these colors in them. Well, so does the heart. Now, this heart was opalized. This is called a Yoa nut. It's from the Yoa region in Australia. And you can see all these different colors. You see all the reds and blues and greens and pinks and oranges. And, you know, all these different colors are different transition metal compounds and complexes. Now, as they move through, they carry these different molecules with them. Now, how did this thing end up being all these perfect colors? Well, obviously that didn't spontaneously happen. This is in, was in a, a wet, bloody environment, a heavily, extremely heavy blood and extremely wet. And what other Salvomorphism, I can't exactly say, but opals seem to be, have been produced, literally fossilized in blood. So, what happens? All the tissue that's in here has a certain preference. It has a preference, a certain color, one of these molecules says, you know, I love these blue guys. They can come over here, stay forever because I, I am just absolutely perfect with them. But I don't want any of these red guys to come in here and attach to me because I, I don't like them. I don't work with them at all. I don't like the yellow. I don't like the blue. I don't like the green. I want this guy. I want that one right there, this little turquoise looking guy. So they collect all the tur turquoise guys as they pass through them in the, these solutions. That's carboxylation. As, and that's what happens with everything. So carbon-14 testing does not really work because carboxylation never stops, ever. So the carbon that they're testing could have come in and out of here a hundred times. But sooner or later, these things are going to stabilize with the molecule that makes them feel most stable, most comfortable, most has the best affinity to attach to that in, in, a, in a way that will not come apart and that's where and then when they harden up after they have made that association 
be being in that wetness so long that they could find the guy that they wanted to be with, and they all looked like they found the perfect guys, and they all turned into colors they wanted to be because of the the molecule, like it should said, the color that's given off when you look at it because of the photon of light. So that's what happens. That's a heart. Our chemistry in our bodies is so fabulously specific and not understood. Mud fossils is the key to everything. Being totally overlooked and 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 being pushed aside, really pushed pushed hard aside, because it it really upsets the apple cart in every single direction. You could, the apple cart just got to stop and the apples are gone. You got to start over with new apples because the apples you got don't work. 